Praise be Jesus and Mary. Today the church celebrates in our liturgy one of the greatest saints of all time. St. Vincent de Paul called St. Francis de Sales the truest copy of Jesus on earth. The truest copy of Jesus on earth. It's quite a compliment from one saint to another. Saintly Bishop of Geneva was born in Savoy in 1567 and died in the French city of Lyon in December 28th, 1622. Earlier on in that year, same year, 1622, Francis de Sales was privileged to be in Rome for the canonization of another famous Francis, St. Francis Xavier, who was canonized together with the founder of the Jesuits, St. Ignatius Loyola. It's reported that at the canonization, St. Francis de Sales, in speaking of Francis Xavier said that this is the third Francis that the church has canonized, and I'll be the fourth. I'll be the fourth. Uh, True to his word, the gentleman saint, as he was called, was canonized 33 years later by Pope Alexander VII. The dominant characteristic of St. Francis de Sales in his pastoral work was his capacity to accompany in a loving way the persons who were entrusted To his care, much of this is seen in his work of spiritual direction. He himself said this. He said, it's hard work to guide individual souls, but it's a labor which feels light, like the reapers of the harvest and those who harvest grapes. These laborers are only content when they have much work and much to carry. What are some of the qualities that St. Francis de Sales demonstrated in his guidance of souls? One of them was the richness of his humanity. He said, God is a God, is God, God is God of the human heart, he wrote in his treatise on the love of God. God is God of the human heart. And St. Francis de Sales himself loved people with a truly human heart, and he manifested that love even in his writing. He wrote, once I have the heart of a father, however, in that heart, there's also something of the heart of a mother as well. And he also said this, he said that I think that in the world there are no souls which love more cordially and more tenderly, and to put it in simple terms, more lovingly than me, simply because it's pleased God to make my heart this way. In order to guide souls well, you need to know yourself well. St. Francis de Sales was conscious of the goodness that God had placed in his heart, obviously a goodness that God intended for him to extend to other souls as well. Also in his guidance of souls, he acted, we can say, as a father, he acted as a mother, he acted even as a brother as well. He knew how to be demanding, yet he knew how to do so with sweetness and serenity. A good guide of souls is able to put others at peace with their demeanor, and St. Francis de Sales certainly had that gift. St. Francis called everyone to holiness in life, but he was able to tailor that holiness, to tailor that call to the individuals in his care and to the people in their state of life without compromising holiness itself. He tailored God's call to holiness without insisting that it's a one-size-fits-all affair, because it's not. He asked for obedience from his subjects, from his directees, But it wasn't a suffocating or unrealistic obedience. It was obedience that was fostered in a climate of confidence, a climate of liberty, a climate of understanding. Typically, when a directee knows that a director understands them and has empathy for them, uh, it's much easier for them to embrace the counsel that comes from the director. If nothing else, I'm sure that uh, St. Francis de Sales, that many of those who came to him for spiritual direction, uh, put into practice the advice that he gave them simply because of the love that they themselves had for him. And that's one of the gifts of the saints as well. Sometimes the saints can get us to do what we wouldn't otherwise do simply out of love for them. Uh, The highest motive, of course, would be to do good simply out of a pure love for God, but doing good out of a love for a saint uh, isn't a bad motive either. You know, if we can see the face in Christ of Christ in someone else, then Christ can become more real to us, then love itself can become more real to us as well. And that's when it becomes easier 
to make choices out of love rather than making choices out of fear or out of routine or making choices out of selfishness. To St. Jane or St. John de Chantal, Francis de Sales wrote this. He said, This is the rule of our obedience, which I write for you in capital letters. Do all through love, nothing through constraint. Love obedience more than you fear disobedience. I leave you the spirit of freedom, not that which excludes obedience, which is the freedom of the world, but that liberty which excludes violence, anxiety, and scruples, he wrote to her in a letter from October 14, 1604. And we know those three things, violence, anxiety, scruples, those three things do not come from God. And that's what the saint warned his spiritual children against. It came to my mind when I wrote that, someone might quote to me, you know, Matthew eleven twelve, 12, where Jesus talks about taking the kingdom of heaven by violence. So obviously God approves of that. Well, uh, we'll just say for now that that's a different type of violence that Jesus is talking about in that passage. If you have confusion about it, maybe we can discuss it in spiritual direction if, if necessary. So today let's ask Our Lady, the Mother of Good Counsel, who resolved a great difficulty, a great spiritual difficulty for St. Francis de Sales early on in his life. Let's ask her, uh, let's bring to her any spiritual doubts or difficulties that we have, and let's also ask her to send more holy directors of souls into the church as she did 400 years ago with the now great doctor and saint, St. Francis de Sales. Praise be Jesus and Mary.